All right, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It's your host with the most. So in case you're wondering who's this, no, it's not me. This is Orlando Moore. Okay, and we're going to be revisiting a situation that went down in the Dominican Republic involving this man right here, Orlando Moore, and his girlfriend. They were the couple from New York City that went to the Dominican Republic for a vacation, and they ended up disappearing. They were found later on and so on and so forth. We're going to talk about all of that. We're not going to talk about so much that, but we're more going to talk about some things that seem very funny and how quick authorities were to put all this to rest. Yeah, it was an accident. They ran off the road and ended up at the bottom of the ocean. And that's the end of that story. Okay, let's move along. That's just not seeming right there are too many things that are out of place and I, I haven't heard anyone ask these questions and i've looked over and over and over so i'm going to ask these questions but first i'll let you know that orlando's family has put together a gofundme and they are trying to raise money to return him to new york city not jamaica even though he is a jamaican citizen we'll talk about that as well First, though, let me say this. A picture tells a thousand words and more, right? In this case, a picture tells a million words. And I'm going to compare this picture to the next picture you're going to see. I don't know why people don't want to admit it. But listen, if you look at the couple that they met and spent their last hours with, right? So here you have the New York City couple on your right, the black couple. And then you have that white couple on your left. If you look at the body language of the woman, the white woman, her mate, her man in the middle, he's raising his arm, his right hand. But if you notice, she's pulling away. Look at her body language. She is leaning more out that way, even though her face is turned towards whoever is taking the picture and she's trying to give a smile. Now, people might say, so Flo, you're reaching too far. Okay, I might be. Let's check this other picture out. So, if you notice, they're in a waterfall, right? And there's Orlando in the middle again. His arm is around his woman. Watch all the way to the right. That Canadian tourist man, his arm is around the back of the neck of his woman, but he's throwing a thumbs up with his arm leaning on Orlando. Now look at his woman. Look at where her right hand is. Okay? It's somewhere around his ass area, around his derriere area. There. That's a bit intimate. Okay? And if I was to meet another couple and take pictures, I would definitely not put my woman in the middle for her to be that close to a man that we had just met. She would be on the outside just like his woman is on the outside just like Orlando's woman is on the outside, right? All right. Now, as the story goes, these are the questions that I want to ask. All right, so this is what I want to ask, right? The, the police in the Dominican Republic said uh, that Ravenel, which is the female here, she was found on the 27th of March right now this is the what the, this would be the day they were supposed to fly out right since they left on the 26th they were found she was found on the 27th and they're saying that they found her on the highway unconscious unidentifiable and unrecognizable but she was alive and she was brought to the hospital but she died eight days later and she was positively ID'd through fingerprints to be this person. So this is how they knew that this was her. Now, given the place that they found her on the highway, they went back there and brought their own forensic teams and they claim that it shows skid marks on the road where the car would have careened out of control and then went over the cliff right so okay we're supposed to believe the theory that the car crashed 
and she managed to escape before it went into the ocean with Orlando. Either she was not wearing her seatbelt, which she would have never done given how she was described by others as someone that was extremely careful, somewhat scared, scary, as far as very overly cautious, not someone to ride around without her seatbelt, especially in these conditions, leaving, driving late night on a 100 mile drive on roads that are not too familiar to them, right? Why did the rental car company not raise an alarm? She was in the hospital for eight days and there was no alarm raised about a missing rental car. That alone is suspicious to me. That rental car company should have been calling the US, should have been calling other branches, other places that they thought this couple would have been calling the airline hey did this couple check out yesterday because usually when you rent a car it normally says your time of your arrival your flight number and your leaving date and the flight number of you leaving they could have called that airline and it says what airline you're coming on and what airline you're going from they should have called that airline and that airline would have raised an alarm with higher ups who would have then made it a big deal in the US hey did they come back no nope, we haven't seen them blah 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 all right Orlando's body they said washed up on the 31st but it was unrecognizable decomposed so badly that they couldn't recognize the body but they kept the body it was because of a tattoo and then some other forensics that made them realize that it was him his body supposedly washed up 13 miles away from where his girlfriend was found the vehicle the rental car the rental car company still has not issued a warning for their rental car and or issued a warrant or a bolo be on the lookout for that rental car and that rental car according to law enforcement and law enforcement is saying according to fishermen they saw who do deep sea diving they saw the car at the bottom of the ocean here's the part that bugs me by their own admittance this piece of road that Orlando and Revenel were on this road is known to be filled this is their exact words this road is known to be filled with bandits preying on tourists and robbers who are known to set up traps on the road to cause car trouble or accidents Hmm. My theory is they ran into a trap. Somebody set a trap up. It blew their tires out. They couldn't go any further. They were pounced upon by bandits who dragged them from the car, beat the daylights out of Orlando, strapped him back in the car, rolled that car over the cliff, and did as they wished with Ravenel as she fought for her life and fought for her body and they beat her and beat her and beat her that is the reason why she was found unrecognizable unidentifiable and unconscious right she was taken to the hospital where she hang off she did hang on but she died eight days later according to them that is my theory now Orlando's family has started a GoFundMe and the GoFundMe is supposed to be to help bring his body back to the US. This must also coordinate through the Jamaican consulate since Orlando was traveling on a Jamaican passport and returning a body to the US is a complex and expensive process. The family explains on a GoFundMe page. The family of the deceased is responsible for all costs that are associated with this. The synopsis notes that money raised would be used for a funeral, for investigation, and to help Orlando's three children. They are trying to raise $20,000. And so far, they have raised $3,200. So that is where they're at so far. Started a GoFundMe, 
to get his body back in the U.S. If you believe that this was just an accident, leave your comment in the comment section below. I don't think it was just an accident. If you think this was foul play, leave your comment in the comment section below as well. I am not thinking that this Canadian couple was involved in their disappearance. I'm more leaning towards a trap was set in the street and it blew their tires out and gangs pounced upon them and did what they wanted to and rolled that car over into the ocean. But I can't help but to think that there was some kind of swinging lifestyle going on here with them and that Canadian couple. However, if so be the case and they're not involved in their disappearance, then hey, they're grown people, they make their own choices, they live their own lives, right? But I would definitely take a closer look at them just to make sure no stones are left unturned. Leave your comment in the comment section below, tell me what you think about this one, and we hope we get justice for Ravenel and Orlando. So for TV, man, I'm out.